James reminds us that faith without works is dead, urging us to let our actions reflect our beliefs by serving others and living out our faith daily. He challenges us to embrace trials with joy, seeing them as opportunities to develop perseverance and a deeper trust in God. Cultivating this mindset requires gratitude and a focus on the growth the challenges bring. He also teaches us to be quick to listen and slow to speak, a principle that enhances communication and fosters understanding in our relationships. But how can we practically apply these teachings from James to transform our inner lives and our interactions with others? Learn from the book of James, Inside Out, only here on Good Morning Pastor. Good morning mga kapaglaom and karon nga kabuntagon sa kapinasahi. Tungod kay ang atong bisita karon, gipakyaw gini niya nining kabuntagon. Murag mapalaban meron ni Daryl mga kapaglaom. Right. Atong bisita karon from United States of America. Pastor Clement Augustus Mori. Good morning, Pastor. Pastor Welcome. Pastor C.A. Oh. Good to be here. I like Pastor C.A. better, yeah. Oh, thanks. Thank <laughs> so, Pastor, uh, ito topic ka rin mga kapaglaom, no? Uh, the book of James inside out. And Pastor, uh, in James chapter 2, verse 17, tell us the faith without works is dead. How can I apply this? Really, we, we tend to stop at that verse, faith without works is dead. The truth is, faith without works is no faith. Mm. If, if you have works and if you have faith, they have to go together. You cannot separate them. Yeah. If I say I love my wife and she says, would you bring me a glass of water? And I say, no. nah, I don't feel it. You, you, know, you do it. Um, <laughs> then do I really love her? If I'm not willing to sacrifice for her, if I'm not willing, willing to do something for her, well, then maybe I don't really love her. So if you're not willing to do something for the Lord, then maybe you really don't have faith. So faith without works is not dead. It's non-existent. It doesn't exist. If you have faith, you will do something. Makes sense. Thank okay. you so much, Pastor. What's interesting about the book of James is that it's not only about works as well, but also about words and the quality of words. And speaking of this quality of words, how can we harness this quality of words? And what qualifies as quality words? James is a very practical person. He, mm -hmm. Because he was a leader of the church in Jerusalem, he was an administrative kind of guy. He was very practical in his, 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 his teachings okay. to his people. Mm -hmm. The truth is Christians have to watch their mouths. True, all oh. the time. By thy words, Matthew says, thou art justified. By thy words, thou art condemned. Mm. Your words can build up your words can tear down. There is great power in, in the words. Yeah. When I was pastoring my last church, I had 2,142 members, a large church. Wow. 2,000 people every Sabbath. Yes. There were certain women that we had at the front of the church to greet people when they came in. There was one lady who was part of that group that we had to ask to step down because if she was having a bad day, she was going to make you have a bad day. You know. That was not the first face you want to see coming to church on Sabbath. Because if she was mad, then she spoke mad. Okay. She didn't know that trusting in Christ gives you good words to say. And that words have weight and words have meaning. And that's what James okay. is trying to say. Let your words build up, not tear down. The problem is that although words have meaning, but sometimes they get offended by our words. Mm. Even if it's true. How do we reconcile that, Pastor? Yeah. Well... Christ said some tough things. Ellen White says, Christ uttered his most scathing rebukes with tears yeah. in your eyes. Mm. Yeah. So, if you're talking to me, you can talk to me plain and straight. Okay. If you show me that you love me. Mm -hmm. If you don't really show love to me, then I'm not really open to hearing what you say. So first, lead with love, and that love, let love season your words. Okay. And mm. that's how you get to be accepted even when your words are a little strong and a little tough. So I guess what you're saying is you, you have to show, you have to make the person feel that uh, you love them and then 
they could understand where you're coming from. Yeah. I've got to know that you care. You just want you just want what's best for them. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Pastor, uh, uh, how can develop uh, a mindset and gratitude? And yes, Mr. Oh, yes. Ellen White says something very interesting. She says there are those who will miss out on heaven because of ingratitude. She says there are children of God who are guilty of base ingratitude. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. If you are not grateful for what you have, mm -hmm. why would God give you more? Mm -hmm. What's his motivation to give you Makes more? Sense. You okay. know, I have, I have a dollar oh. and I want two, but I show no thankfulness for the dollar that I do have. So why would God give you more? If God gives you more and you are not grateful for what you have, that actually is working against you because you're not showing gratitude. And if God keeps giving you and blessing you and blessing you and blessing you and blessing you and you show no gratitude, that actually works against you. Mm -hmm. So God withholds those blessings for your own good. Uh -huh. So if you want more, be thankful for what you have and then God opens the door to give you more. Wow. <laughs> Some, some people miss out on heaven because they are ungrateful. Some people, they just want to want more. Want more. I'm guilty. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all are. <laughs> I'm not just speaking for myself. I think we all are guilty about this because we want more blessings, we want more friends, more. we want more appreciation. And sometimes we cry because we don't get acknowledgement. Yeah. And God is willing to give you that. Mm -hmm. But he wants to hear gratitude for what you have. You know, he wants to hear that you are thankful for what you have. And it's your thankfulness, again, that opens the door for you to get more. One right. final question, Pastor. James said, quick to listen, slow to speak. Can you please tell us more about that? You got two ears, you got one mouth. Mm -hmm. End of story. Okay. You know? <laughs> <laughs> does, that mean, two of these, does that mean one need, of these? Uh, does that mean we need to understand more and then... Yeah. Uh, critique less. <laughs> Listen before you speak. Uh, yeah. Mm. Make sure your words are redemptive. There is a, a wise French philosopher named Blaise Pascal. He says, Ooh, before you tear down, build up. So if I, I've got to tell you, you, you're doing something bad. Maybe I should start by telling you what you're doing good. Good, okay. Then move into what you're doing bad. We tend to start with, you know, you're a bad person. You need to change that. You need ah. to stop. You know, <laughs> I need to tell you, you know what? You're a good person, mm. but you need to grow in this one area. Then you're a little softer. You're will, willing mm -hmm. to hear what I have to say. But if I start with the fist, you're not going to hear what I have to say. Wow. Thank you so much, Pastor. And uh, any parting words to our viewers here? The Bible says, trust in the Lord. You're going to be ch tested. You're going to be challenged. But testing and challenging is how God makes us stronger in Him. So... Grow from those tests, trust in the Lord, and he will save your soul, and he will make you stronger in Jesus.